and we can talk about more my functionality, namely micro mesh functionality. So instead, um, you know what, let's do this again. Let's go ahead and yeah, we'll delete these out of here. And we've got this plane sitting here. So one more time, I'm gonna go in here to B, or Z Marler brush, insert nano mesh on polygroup all. So it maintained those settings. So again, hover over face, insert nano mesh polygroup all, and go ahead and scatter some of these around. Let's go back down to our nano mesh. We'll turn off show placement, go down here to random distribution. Let's increase these uh, Z variances here. We can uh, increase the overall length, and if we want to, we can also take this width. We can make these planes a little bit wider so we can see them a little bit more. And that's also going to have um, a size controlling factor when we get into creating micro poly versions of these. So let's go down here, and again, we'll just drop that random distribution, so something like this maybe. Uh, so again, we'll just hit one to mesh this time. Hold down Control Shift, isolate that plane. Control Shift, drag to invert that selection, and then Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. Of course, that's underneath Geometry, Modify Topology, and Delete Hidden. So we have these planes now. And again, you know, we'll recalculate the collision volume just in case. Go down here, run the simulation, and it works just as normal. However, instead of using IMM to go through after the fact and replace these, we can do that on the fly with MicroPoly. So this time let's go into MicroPoly and let's choose wire 01. Let's turn off polyframes so we can see what's happening. And right now they're all pointing <laughs> kind of across the mesh. That's not exactly what we want. So we can go in here to rotate Z and that'll rotate them down the mesh. And now what we're getting is like a woven rope here. And again, it's doubled up. So if we go turn MicroPoly off, because we have that division down the middle, it's replacing every single face with a doubled up rope. Uh, if you want to on some of these, let's go through here and say insert multiple edge loops and hold down Alt. And we'll just kill some of these middle planes so we can have a little bit more variation to play with. So when I turn MicroPoly on, now you're gonna see these have some pretty big thick ropes and then these have uh, doubled up ropes or a little bit thinner. So now what we can do is there's still just a plane. This is just dynamic. It, it gets turns on and off it's really simulating just those planes, but it's gonna look like when we run that simulation that it's got you know, these little twizzlers hanging out uh, all over the object here. So that's what it looks like it's simulating. So this is another very powerful way to go through. And again, it's all dynamics. So if you wanna go through here and you know, maybe change it to liquify and run the simulation, you know, it's gonna give you a little bit of a different result. You know, change the gravity strength, let's slow it down just a bit and watch these kind of, kind of eventually, you know, let's turn this up so you can see it a little bit better too. And maybe we'll turn on polyframe with line turned off. So as we're going through and simulating this, you're gonna see all those individual strands kind of uh, end up uh, draped over here. Now again, this isn't real geometry just yet. It's just those tubes being replaced dynamically with this geometry. However, you can say, go ahead and apply that. So now this is real geometry. It's not just a plane anymore. There's no plane to go back to. You can go through here and move around all this geometry. In fact, if we go into move, and we say, go in here to brush settings and we say auto masking and we turn on topological, I can move individual strands around. These are now individual woven strands. If I go into solo mode here, let's hold down control shift, just grab a little piece of uh, one of these ropes, do control shift A. Here you're gonna see that's an entire strand being woven. If I could do control shift drag, there's the rest of the rope without it. Control shift tap to bring everything else back. In fact, we can go through here and we can do an auto groups and now every strand has its own poly group. So we can even turn off topological. We can just go through here and we can just select individual strands. So this might be an interesting way too, where you can do like hair simulation. So we can like go through here and say split hidden. And now we have just these strands that we're going to dynamically simulate. So we can go through here and we can say go back up to dynamics, uh, run simulation, and now it's gonna run simulation on that geometry. Of course, you know, we need to change our firmness a little bit, maybe crank up our iterations, maybe crank down our gravity strength so that this will kind of stay together a little bit more. It's also uh, has thickness. So, you know, self collision, maybe putting in a little bit of inflate uh, amount might keep that a little bit more viable as a simulated option. I'm just gonna isolate, you know, this little bundle here, do control shift A to visibility grow all, and we're gonna go ahead and say split hidden. You know, we can even simplify this. Let's go ahead and hold down control shift. I'm gonna say trim curve. I'm just gonna trim everything past that point off. So it's gonna go ahead and close holes for me as well. So we just have these uh, hanging in space. I'm gonna go ahead and mask this upper portion here. If you wanna, you know, blur that mask, just control click it. Or go into your masking options. 
you know, and play around with those. Uh, but now what we can do is we can run the simulation. Now, because these simu uh, you know, these are separate pieces of geometry as we're doing this, and especially if you turn on like self-collision, um, it's going to start separating and untangling these cords. So actually, let's go ahead and turn gravity. I mean, you turn the gravity strength down just a bit, um, just so it's not going to like pull very much. You know, so and crank up the firmness. You can see as we're running that simulation, it's going to kind of start unraveling. Which, if that's what you're going for, is kind of cool. You can also go in here to like B C cloth twister. I'm going to go down here to the very bottom. I'm just going to kind of just tap this to kind of go through and like you know kind of untangle these even more, and then just keep running that simulation here. Maybe crank up gravity just a bit. Or you know what, self-collision up to two maybe. So those will start separating. And you can also, if we go in here to brush cloth pull, or I guess we can stick with the cloth, cloth hook for now. Just like we were doing earlier under brush topological, you can go through here and you can use your cloth brushes to kind of go through here. Just kind of unravel some of these. Just kind of go through and just kind of start using your cloth brush for this. Uh, and you don't even have to use topological. In this case, they all have separate polygroups. Um, and, you know, actually we have caps of different polygroups. So let's go back down here to polygroup, auto group. And then now you can actually say mass by polygroups up to 100. And now this, this will only work with, you know, these meshes. So you can go back through here and then rerun your claw simulation. It'll continue to unravel. That's a cool way to kind of get, you know, loose threads and unraveling based on originally what was a plane converted to a micropoly converted to, you know, a dynamic mesh that you can go through and modify.